Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. We are excited to have you here. Our channel is dedicated to providing you with the best study tools and resources to help you ace your exams. Let us get started with today's learning. Question 1. Explain each of the following terms. Participatory democracy. The term participatory democracy refers to a democratic system in which citizens actively and directly participate in the decision-making process of their government and have a significant role in shaping policies and making important decisions. Project Grant A project grant is a financial award for the funding of a specific capital project. For example, a project grant may be allocated to construct a community health clinic to address a pressing need within a community. Legal Advisory Service Advisory legal services refer to a specialized form of legal assistance provided by legal professionals, typically within the office of the state attorney or a similar governmental legal department. Parliament Parliament is a legislative body within a democratic system that serves as the highest decision-making and law-making authority of a country. It consists of elected representatives who are chosen by the citizens to represent their interests. Direct participation. Direct participation is a democratic process in which a voter directly engages by casting their vote for a political party or representative. Accounting audits. Accounting audits involve the examination of financial records to verify the accurate recording of transactions. This process ensures that financial data is properly documented and adheres to accounting standards and regulations. Internal financial regulations. Internal financial regulations encompass various controls and guidelines within an organization that govern financial activities. For example, the Department of Finance may implement internal financial regulations to ensure the proper allocation of budgetary funds, adherence to fiscal policies, and transparency in financial reporting. Democracy. Democracy is a system of governance in which governing power resides in the hands of the people rather than being exercised exclusively through representatives. Indirect participation. Indirect participation refers to a democratic process in which elected representatives make decisions on behalf of voters. In this system, citizens do not directly make decisions or pass laws themselves, instead, they elect individuals to represent their interests and make decisions on their behalf. A tender board is a governing body or committee within an organization or government entity that is responsible for overseeing and managing the acquisition or procurement of all goods or services. The judiciary consists of the Constitutional Court, the Supreme Court of Appeal, and the Magistrates Court. The answer is true. A one-party system consists of only one party making all the decisions while no opposition parties are allowed. The answer is true. Legislative authorities on all levels of government should not delegate their authority to impose taxes to executive or administrative authorities. The answer is true. Municipalities get their revenue from excise duties, the use of sports facilities, and letting of property. The answer is true. Accounting officers are heads of state departments. The answer is true. Indicate whether the following statements are true or false. The military defense function is to defend and protect the lives of individuals and communities against threats. The answer is false. The legislature is responsible for safeguarding public funds. The answer is true. Housing, provincial libraries, and the construction of dams are examples of limited or fixed conditional grants. The answer is false. A price per unit can be determined for this service, which makes it an apportionable service. The answer is true. Equal distribution is a formula for fair, reasonable, and equitable allocation of taxing authority and funds essential for good intergovernmental finance relations. The answer is true. 
indicate whether the following statements are true or false. To be appointed on the Finance and Fiscal Commission a candidate must be impartial and hold office in a political party. The answer is false. The government gets its funds mainly from the gross domestic product. The answer is false. The primary object of the South African Reserve Bank is to protect the value of the currency in the interest of balanced and sustainable economic growth in the republic. The answer is true. The main responsibilities of the Finance Committee are to ensure the safekeeping of funds. The answer is true. The Chief Financial Officer is responsible for the correctness of financial transactions and also has to submit reports to the Finance Committee of the Council. The answer is true. Question 3. Name and explain the factors that commonly describe a budget. The answer. A budget typically comprises several key factors that collectively define its structure and purpose. These factors include 1. A statement of intent. This statement is used to reflect the ideology of the ruling party by outlining the political goals and ideologies of the governing party or leadership. It provides a high-level vision of the government's policy priorities and helps to guide budget allocations in line with these principles. For example, a conservative political party might include a statement of intent that reflects the party's ideology, emphasizing limited government intervention in the economy, lower taxes, and higher national defense expenditure. 2. The work program. This element of the budget indicates how that department intends to provide public services by outlining the specific plans, programs and projects a government department or agency intends to provide to the public in the coming fiscal year. 3. Source of information showing how many services will be provided. This factor identifies the sources of data and the information used to determine the quantity and quality of services that the government plans to deliver. It relies on various data sources, such as demographics, historical trends, and expert analysis, to estimate the demand for services. Fourth, accountability is a critical aspect of budgeting. It ensures that government funds are used efficiently and transparently by, including mechanisms for oversight, reporting, and auditing to hold government officials accountable for their fiscal management and decisions. These measures help to instill public confidence and reassure taxpayers that their money is being used with good judgment and ultimately contribute to the effective delivery of public services and programs. Lastly, the budget holds a control instrument used to gauge how much to spend on a program. This involves setting specific expenditure limits for each program or initiative within the budget to ensure spending remains within predefined boundaries and that resources are allocated according to priorities and availability of funds. Question 3. State the criteria which determine the financial capacity of each government institution to generate income and funds. The answer. The financial capacity of government institutions to generate income and funds is influenced by several criteria, including. Criteria 1. Per capita income of the community. The per capita income of the community or population served by a government institution is a crucial factor in determining its financial capacity. This metric reflects the average income of residents and can indicate the potential tax revenue that can be collected. For example, in a high-income community, government institutions may have a greater capacity to generate income through higher tax collections than in a low-income community, where the financial capacity may be limited and the government relies on grants or subsidies to fund essential services. 2. The revenue potential of an ideal tax system. The design and effectiveness of a government's tax system significantly impact its revenue potential. An ideal tax system is one that efficiently collects revenue without imposing excessive burdens on taxpayers. For instance, a progressive income tax system, where tax rates increase with income levels, has the potential to generate substantial revenue from higher income individuals while an inefficient or regressive tax system may limit such. 3. 
potential revenue collected within a certain demarcated area. Government institutions often have jurisdiction over specific geographic areas or regions. The revenue potential within these demarcated areas can vary based on economic activity and population density. For instance, a city with a thriving tourist district may have a higher capacity to collect property taxes and generate local revenue compared to a rural area with fewer economic opportunities. Question. Explain the characteristics of a laissez-faire government ideology. The answer. Laissez-faire government ideology is characterized by the following key features. 1. Less government intervention. Laissez-faire emphasizes minimal government interference in the lives of citizens, particularly in economic activities related to buying and selling. The government takes a hands-off approach to the economy, allowing market forces to largely determine prices, production, and trade. 2. Basic conditions for free competition. Laissez-faire governments provide the fundamental conditions necessary for free competition to thrive. This includes maintaining law and order to prevent fraud and illegal activities and enforcing contracts to ensure that agreements are honored. In addition, the government protects private property rights and defends the country against external threats or enemies. These conditions create a stable environment in which businesses can operate and individuals can engage in economic activities with confidence. 3. Competition is allowed freely and without regulation. One of the hallmarks of laissez-faire ideology is the belief in allowing competition to operate without excessive government regulation. This means that businesses are generally free to enter and exit markets, set their own prices, and make their own production decisions. The idea is that competition will naturally lead to efficiency, innovation, and the best allocation of resources. Question. Discuss financial decision-making in a representative democracy. The answer. Financial decision-making in a representative democracy aims to balance the interests of the electorate with the efficient allocation of resources. The taxpayers, who are also voters, participate indirectly by electing representatives who make financial decisions on their behalf. While this system is considered to be ideal by some, to others it comes with challenges, as discussed below. Direct participation. In a representative democracy, the taxpayer, who is also the voter participates directly in the democratic process by casting their votes in elections. These votes determine which representatives will be entrusted with making financial decisions on behalf of the voters in their constituents. 2. Challenges in large communities. The representative democracy model becomes increasingly difficult and expensive to implement in large communities or nations with diverse populations. Coordinating the interests and preferences of a vast number of citizens can be logistically challenging. Despite the challenges, the principle of representative democracy is still adhered to in many democratic societies. It is seen as a way to ensure that the government is accountable to the people and that decisions reflect the will of the majority. Accountability of elected representatives. To make financial decision-making in a representative democracy work, the elected representatives must be accountable to their constituents. They are expected to represent the interests and preferences of the voters who elected them. This accountability ensures that financial decisions are made in the best interests of the public. Challenges of corruption and mismanagement Representative democracies are not immune to challenges such as corruption, theft, and mismanagement. In some cases, elected officials may prioritize personal gain over public welfare. Cases of corruption and misappropriation of public funds can erode public trust in the system. Briefly describe, what is a conditional grant? A conditional grant refers to a financial allocation from one level of government to another, typically with specific conditions attached to how the money can be spent. These conditions can take the form of either broad guidelines or specific requirements. 
There are two main types of conditional grants. One, variable or unlimited conditional grants. These grants come with conditions that may change or increase over time, often in response to changing external circumstances. Fixed or limited condition grants. These grants have predefined and stable conditions attached to them. They are more commonly used to fund collective services, such as provincial libraries accessible to the entire country. Conditional grants serve several purposes, including Reducing inequality among regions. Promoting intergovernmental relations. Fostering cooperation between different levels of government. They are a tool for the providing government to ensure that the allocated funds are used for specific purposes to achieve policy objectives and desired outcomes. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and be the first to know when we upload new videos.